In this video, we're going to discuss how you can calculate dividends when you're preparing the statement of cash flows. So let's say you have the following information. You know that for a company, the net income for the period was $100, the beginning balance of retained earnings was $30, and then the ending balance of retained earnings was $35. Simply from this information, you can calculate the amount of dividends for that period. And you do it by setting up a T account. So let's say we've got our retained earnings here and we started with $30 and we know we end with 35. Now the net income is important because net income is going to increase retained earnings, okay? So now we see that we've got 30 and then we add 100, so that's 130, but then we only get to 35. So what happens? Well, we must have had some kind of a debit to retained earnings, okay? So if we add this up, we could say, okay, 100 plus 30 minus 35, so that's gonna give us 95. So 95, this is going to be the amount of dividends for this period, so that's our, our dividends, and that's gonna go in the cash flow from financing activities section of the statement of cash flow. So you would have cash flow from financing activities, it would say payment of dividends, and it would be a cash outflow of $95, okay? Now this is assuming that basically there's only two things that are affecting retained earnings, the net income uh, or loss or dividends. Theoretically, there are other things that can affect the retained earnings account, uh, but if you're an accounting student and you're doing exam, you're, you're, unless you're actually told that there's something else that affects the retained earnings account, th then you shouldn't worry about that. And also, this, these same calculations can be used if you have an accumulated deficit instead of retained earnings. Remember, accumulated deficit is basically when retained earnings has a debit balance instead of an initial credit balance, right? If it was $30 as a debit balance to start instead of, of 30 credit, Accumulated deficit just means the firm's accumulated losses over time. Now, let's leave that aside. I want to show you an example where we start with a net loss. Okay, so, so instead of having net income, we're going to have a net loss, and, that, and then we'll calculate the dividend. So let's say that our beginning balance of retained earnings is $200, and I've set up a T account here, so we start with $200. The ending balance is $140. Okay, so we get we started 200, we get to 140, and we know that we had a net loss of $50. Now, a net loss, in contrast to net income, remember net income, we said, oh, that increased retained earnings. Well, a net loss is going to decrease retained earnings. So we've got we've got $50 over here. That is the, because of the loss. So we start with 250, we subtract the 50. That only gets us to 150, and yet we end up at 140. What does that mean? It means there must have been an extra debit here of $10. There was an extra debit of $10. That's going to make this balance, right? Because 200 minus 50 minus 10 is going to be 140. So we had dividends that were issued of $10. And again, that's going to go in the cash flow from financing section. We're going to have something that says dividends, and it'll be a $10 cash outflow.